Welcome to Beer Spinoke Reviews. My name's Jason. Today I'm going to be taking a look at some of the biggest and most common mistakes that those new to the world of binoculars make and what we can do to avoid them. First up is one of the biggest and most common mistakes that I see and that is choosing the cheapest binoculars available. Don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting that you have to go out and spend huge amounts of money on your first pair of binoculars. But it's really important that you stay away from the cheapest options out there because in many cases you're far better off than having no binoculars at all. So low cost, yes, but cheapest, no. For more information and how you can avoid falling into this trap yourself, take a look at the following guides um, that you can find on my website by clicking on the links either here in the video or in the description below. Another common mistake that I see is people choosing binoculars that have a magnification that is way too high. In almost all scenarios and most uses, but especially with lower costing binoculars, you are far better off opting for moderate magnifications than looking through binoculars that have very high powers. There are a number of reasons for this, but I'm going to quickly go over the three most important. Higher magnifications require thicker glass to be used. This thicker glass lets through less light, which results in a dimmer, lower quality image being produced. On cheap optics that use low quality and cheap glass, this can be very bad. The higher the magnification, or the more zoomed in you are, the less of the overall picture that you can actually see. This can actually make it really difficult to find and track the object that you're looking for. Um, this is especially important if the object is small or fast moving, say something like a small bird in the trees. Next is the problem with image shape. The higher the power, the harder it becomes to keep the image that you see through the binoculars completely still which has a huge effect on how well or how clear you can, clearly you can see the image that you're trying to look at. So unless you invest in some really expensive digitally stabilized binoculars, you will probably need a tripod or something to keep your binoculars still with magnifications anything um, of 15 times or higher. So just keep in mind and a good rule of thumb that for most uses, eight or 10 times magnification is the ideal choice. Obviously there are exceptions to this rule. So if you are specifically wanting your optics for long distance observation, be that for astronomical or terrestrial use, there are a number of key points to look out for to that ensure that you don't end up with a melon. For more, take a look at the following guides on my website. Once again, links you can either click through here on the video or on the description below. Another huge mistake that I see are people buying cheap zoom or variable magnification binoculars. Now I'll admit it, there have been a few cases where I've come across some reasonably good quality zoom binoculars. But in general, the only good ones are expensive. So if you have a tight budget, you're much better off with a fixed magnification binocular. So why is this? Especially when you consider that most telescopes and spotting scopes enable you to adjust the magnification and thus zoom in and out. Well, it all stems from the fact that a binocular is essentially two separate telescopes connected together. And each of these has to be perfectly synchronized to get a clear and crisp image. This is technically difficult to achieve, even with a fixed magnification, and it gets significantly more complicated to achieve with variable or zoom magnification, because the mechanism has moving elements in each of these telescopes and thus man must maintain the synchronization even while zooming in and out. So my advice is, unless you can afford a really high quality and expensive zoom binocular, you are likely to end up with a device that is disappoints. It will either have a fuzzy image or the alignment will go out of sync um, soon after purchase. So for more details on this and some good quality options that you can find, please take a look at the link I have on my site to Zoom Binoculars. Another massive mistake people make are choosing binoculars that come with a built-in digital camera. A binocular with a built-in camera that enables you to take video or photos of whatever that you're looking at Sounds like the perfect idea in theory. But in reality, unless you're prepared to spend a lot of money, it is a really bad idea. There are a whole bunch of reasons why this just does not work. In fact, there are too many reasons for me to go through on this short video. So if you want to know why I say do not buy a digital camera binocular, please check out this link that will take you through to the relevant article on the BBR website. So what's the alternative? Is there a good way of taking video or photos of what you are looking at through your binoculars? My advice is to either get yourself a really good quality camera and a large telephoto lens, or for a cheaper option, I have had some really good results with uh, using either a digibinning or digiscoping adapter 
and taking photos uh, with your cell phone or indeed your, your small compact camera through your binoculars or spotting scope. Um, there are a number of links here to my reviews um, on, these, on such adapters um, and here are, a th are three of my favorites. So there you have it. I hope that if you're new to binoculars that this video is of some help. If you have anything to add or want to admit to some of the mistakes that perhaps you have made, please feel free to comment down below. Um, once again, thanks for dropping by and I'll see you again next time on BBR. Oh, 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 oh,